Hey guys, um, welcome to the channel, Provavet, bonjour, ciao, guten tag, and hola to my foreign friends. And uh, today we're going to be talking about rare knives and uh, how do you tell whether the knife is rare, what makes a knife rare. And um, when a guy gets a knife, um, the obvious questions are, is how old is this knife, who made this knife, and how valuable it is. Um, after you start collecting knives for a while, though, um, really a bigger question is, do I have any rare knives in my collection? And it's a really hard answer to uh, answer. And um, I've looked for a long time. I haven't really found a good source of uh, rare knives. And, and so... Um, I also researched for a long time on uh, what what really uh, makes a knife rare. And so um, the bottom line is uh, knives that are scarce, very few of them around, are considered uh, rare. And there's a bunch of different reasons why a knife um, is scarce. And so um, all of those have a factor in the rarity of knives so for instance a company may have operated for a short period of time and so um, this knife right here which is an excelsior knife the company operated between 1880 and 1883 and so you know they're rare knives because they only operated a couple years and uh, so they didn't make a lot of knives and um be because they only operated a couple years, um, you just don't see a lot of those knives. Uh, this company here, which is a um, Cornwall Knife Works, Connecticut. It's not a Cornwall knife. It's a Cornwall Knife Works. And so these are kind of rare. And um, they were made in Cornwall. No one really knows who made them. And they're basically made for uh, local markets, uh, not sent out nationally. It wasn't a big company. And so they um, made them for a relatively short period of time. And what really makes that kind of rare is the tang stamp, the company itself. Not the pattern or anything about the knife. It's not particularly really old compared to other knives. But... Um, so it could be the company, you know, uh, had low produ production or uh, just, you know, served a local community. Um, another thing could be the age of the company. And so like Ames or uh, Lyman Bradley, some of the first companies that operated in America, those are really rare knives because uh, there just aren't very many of those knives out there anymore. Most of them, I think, are probably in collections. Um, a big thing has to do with the age of the knife. So um, you you honestly really don't see a lot of knives from the 1800s. So um, if you start looking for knives from the 1800s, uh, mainly what you're going to see is um, pen knives. Pen knives were lightly used, um, usually held in a pocket, and um, they were oftentimes passed on uh, to other family members where, um, you know, knives like these jack knives were hard used every day and they were just flat, worn out and thrown away. And so you have a lot more pen knives available from the 1800s. So uh, jack knives probably in any form are relatively rare from the 1800s. So then you're, you're talking about age as a contributing factor to uh, making the knife rare. Also, um, the pattern itself could uh, make a knife uh, rare. Um, this pattern here, which it, it looks common, you know, it's a, uh, a swell center uh, knife, but it's bolsterless. And when these knives were bolter bolsterless, the swell center balloon in pattern it's, the pattern is very rare. You hardly ever see these knives 
but um, this knife also is from the early 1800s and uh, is pretty rare. But um, so the pattern can make it unusual. Um, this knife right here is a Utica, and Utica is not a rare knife. But um, prior to getting this knife, I've never seen this pattern in a Utica before. And I've seen it on a limited basis in other knives. And that's where you have a center swell and it's a curved jack that comes up on the end here. And um, it's just, you don't see this pattern very often. And I think it's uh, pretty rare. Um, another thing could just be, like I said, the tang stamp on this knife right here. The pattern is pretty common. It's a serpentine slim jack. But this is a Utica Knife and Razor Company uh, knife. So um, this is not a K-Bar knife. It's a Utica knife and razor and this company became Powell Cutlery Company. So this is a really early stamping for Powell Cutlery Company. You don't see this stamping very often and that's what makes it kind of scarce. I don't know whether it's rare or not. I think it probably is. You don't you don't see too many of these at all. And so um you know it could just be the uh, stamping on them. Um so another really weird thing about rare knives is there are thousands of knife companies over the past couple hundred years, and um, <clears throat> not all of them are rare. So uh, you look at this knife, it's very unusual, Sam Buckley and Sons from Sheffield, and this is a very unusual uh, knife uh, you don't normally see. Sam Buckley, they were steel makers, okay, they manufactured steel. But apparently they manufactured some knives too, or had some knives manufactured in their name. And um, you don't see it very often, but this particular knife wouldn't be, I don't think, particularly valuable. So just because it is scarce and rare doesn't mean that it's particularly uh, valuable. These knives here are another example of that. So this is a Schrade Model 821. It was made between 1953 and 1954. It's a um, serpentine um, whittler and only made for one year. Out of all the years that Schrade made knives, over 53 years that Alba Bear made Schrade knives, this knife was only made one of those years. And so um, I don't know how many were put out there but I tell you what, you don't see this pattern very often. It's very hard to get a hold of. Um, but it's also not extremely valuable. And that's a case of the uh, company just not being collectible to, to people who collect knives. This is another example here. This knife is only uh, made for a couple years, three years. Um, in this pattern, knife, it's an 818 this pattern doesn't show up in any catalog whatsoever. Probably made between 1954 and 1955 and never made after that. A uh, really, really scarce uh, knife. You just don't see them. This is the only one I've ever seen. And um, it's not really worth anything. And so just because a knife is rare and scarce doesn't mean it, it'll necessarily be worth anything. Um, it all depends on the collector market, whether people are actually acquiring those knives. I think one day, uh, yeah, this knife will be worth a lot of money one day, but um, probably not in my lifetime, but maybe in my kid's lifetime. And so um, the other thing is um, really high value knives are often counterfeited. That happens a lot with case knives. Uh, Remington knives and Winchester knives. So you need to do your homework on the knife and um, and figure out uh, what that knife should look like. If you're uh, really wanting to get a hold of a rare knife, um, pick one out and then look for it. That's the best way to do it. It's it's you can't go online and look at uh, a listing that says. Uh, uh, Schrade Cutlery Model 808 Rare. You know, uh, you see that it's overused on the internet, Rare. 
and uh, most knives are not rare and um, you know very few uh, are considered rare even when they're scarce like the Sam Buckley knife here you know so um, how do you tell a, a rare knife well usually they're unusual okay there's something a little different about the knife um, another thing is uh, you do a search on eBay um, if you look look for this knife right here Cornwall knife uh, works on eBay you won't see a single listing and that me that's because there are not too many of these knives around this knife is in really good shape too by the way the pins are loose here is why this has popped up at the end um, but anyhow that was a cool little find I got that in an antique shop um, so if if the knife you're looking for doesn't pop up on eBay, that's a pretty good uh, indication that it's a scarce knife. Another thing is uh, collector books. And so this is um, uh, Houston Price's uh, collector book right here. It, if you go, you know, this is the Bowie knife uh, section right here. You can see a series of stars here. So you know, Joseph Howard there has two stars, Ruckus. Heinrich, I should have just said A.G. Hicks, right? A lot simpler. So A.G. Hicks has four stars. Joseph Haywood has two. So the stars are, indicate a higher collectability of the knife. Oftentimes, one of the reasons for that is they're, they're considered to be scarce or rare. You don't find very many of them. Another thing that these collector books have is this is a list of knife brands around the world and they do a, a similar um, a similar thing here so you've got these stars so the four star ones are uh, C Platt and Sons and um, I see very few of those knives um, they're they're rare they're also a well-made knife and they're highly collectible so they have four stars if you go right up from that um, you look at looters, okay, um, which is a soldier knife. It's it's two stars, and so um, they're less collectible. And actually, I you, you if you don't know that name, you find a lot of them um, out there on the market. You know, not as much as other knives like case knives and stuff like that, but you find a lot. And so um, these little listings are a good clue, to you. If you have a knife brand, you look it up in this book, and it's got four stars, you know, maybe. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they're rare, but it may be rare. Another is the, um, the uh, this is case knives here. And if you look under this Congress knife, it's a four and an eighth inch Congress knife. And you can see over here, these are the price listings. Now, this is mint. They're usually always in mint. But you can see this is worth four, uh, five thousand dollars. The long pull one is worth six thousand. Quite a bit of money. Okay, so these are rare knives, and um, that's because one they're highly collectible, but there aren't very many out there. If, if there were a dime a dozen, they wouldn't be worth six thousand dollars. And as you go down the list, that's the primary uh, difference. When you look down here, these are in nineteen seventy. Uh, knives right here same same model knife 88 model 88 but it's only worth 175 dollars that's still a lot of money for a uh, 1970 knife so y if you look through these collector books at knives and you see really really high prices for these knives over here most of them you could see an 1800 uh, listing and that's on a model 52 in green bone made prior to 1940. Uh, but one made in the uh, 80s is worth $70. Same model. And so um, scarcity has a lot to do with age. But those are ways you can tell whether your knife is uh, um, scarce or not. And, um, you know, uh, sometimes it's just a pattern like I showed you, this is a really uh, scarce pattern to find a uh, center swell balloon in with no 
usually they either have a tip bolster or a full bolster. This one has none. You don't see very few of them that way. This is a um, a um, jumbo knife. If you put it up, this is a big knife, by the way. This is almost four inches, and you put it up to this knife. There, look at the difference in the size of the knives. So it's much. This knife, this knife right here, is much thicker than this knife, and that's a characteristic of a jumbo knife. This is not only a jumbo knife, it's from the uh, mid to late 1800s. So um, these, uh, Levin said any jumbo knife is uh, rare. I don't know, I see them fairly regularly. Um, I think they're pretty scarce though, jumbo knives. But, um, so it could be the pattern. You take this knife here, it's a clasp knife design. And it was made by um, uh, Ibots and Peace and Company. Later, this knife became uh, WK Peace and Company. And this tang stamp right here is one one of the older ones from um, 1830 to 1854, somewhere around there. And so it's uh, worth a lot more money than than the later ones. And again, it's not really the tang stamp here. It's the A, or not really the pattern. This is a common pattern, but it's one, the age of the knife, and two, the stamp that makes this a rare knife. And so, um, uh, anytime I see a knife I don't recognize, it, it, you know, you, you get a knife, it has a weird name on it. That That's really a clue for me. And also just a knife, that um, is different. This knife here was made by Freire. Um, this is a rare knife. This knife is broken. So uh, on the end here, there's supposed to be, on the end there, there's supposed to be a whistle. And that's not, um, that's missing. But these knives were only made for a period of three to four years. Um, it's made out of pewter. Uh, was made by Freire, who was a principal in some other big-name knife companies like Elephancy, uh, Landers Ferry, and Clark. This is a ferry that was a principal in LFC. He went off and uh, made his own knives, and you just don't see a lot of these knives. So broken or not, I think it's uh, worth having one of these. You just don't see them a lot. And so um, a lot of different things that can bring value to the knife. Uh, basically, um, I think one of the easiest things to do is just do an eBay search on it. If it doesn't pop up, or only a few, you know, if you get a few that pop up, that's probably a pretty scarce knife because usually you're going to get thousands of listings for any knife that you look for on eBay. So that's a pretty good clue right there. You could do that while you're in an antique shop or while you're walking around a uh, flea market and um, you know just google it real quick and that'll let you know that knife may be special um, even even if this knife isn't rare I think it's pretty special it is to me so it's a very unusual pattern from Utica and unusual to find I've seen it a couple times in other knife brands but this is the only one in Utica that I've ever seen and so it's just worth it to me to have it, whether it's rare or not. And I've never tried to price this knife, really. But, um, so that's what, all there is to know about um, knives, rare knives. I wish I could tell you more. I've never found a really good reference that lists knives that are rare. I think the best that you can do is look in a collector book like this. And when you see prices... Uh, over $500, you're talking about a knife that may be rare. <laughs> if it's into the thousands, yeah, it's definitely rare. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative. If you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you'd like to see more content like this, um, go ahead and subscribe. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember, you'll know the truth. The truth will set you free. And uh, I really appreciate you guys for watching the video. Thanks.